Hey guys, this is Avenger back with another video, this time on how to set up your own Minecraft server. Exciting, I know. Alright, so first of all, uh, you have three choices as to what to actually use to host your server. You have the vanilla Minecraft utility, server utility, you have spigot, and you have bucket. Now, each of these has their own advantages. Vanilla Minecraft uh, is something that's really stable, really nice to host, to host a small server for you and your friends to, you know, play around, to build houses together, but it's not really anything that can support any mods, any plugins, or any external uh, third-party apps. Um, Craft Bucket is... Um, it's pretty much what you'd want to use if you have a middle size, if you have a mid sized server, if you're looking for something that can host mods and that can host plugins. Um, and Spigot is what the big servers use. Uh, Spigot has, it's pretty much, it's dedicated to increasing Bucket's performance. It has a whole entire staff team that's dedicated to taking the Craft Bucket latest releases and making them as fast as possible. However, there is a downside. For what it gives you in performance, it sacrifices in stability and compatibility. Uh, so you should really only use this plugin or this uh, this utility if you know what you're doing, if you're good at troubleshooting, if you're good with plugins, if you're good with Java, uh, and if you really need that extra performance boost. However, I would recommend using Bucket for any of your normal server needs. Uh, for this video, I'm just going to use Spigot, but the process of setting up a server is exactly the same for each of these. You download a jar file, and then you put it in your Minecraft folder, and that's it. It's the exact same. Alright, so I already have Spigot downloaded and put into my, uh, my Minecraft folder. Um, you need to run, you need to set up a script to actually initiate the Java machine that hosts the server. Uh, I'm going to use a batch file for my script. Um, I'm going to post the actual batch file in the, in the description, but you need to know uh, a couple things before you actually just start using it. Um, first of all, Minecraft.jar, this right here needs to, mac, it needs, uh, to match the name of what um, your, your jar file is called. Now, I have this defined as Minecraft.jar, so I have to rename this to Minecraft.jar, or else it will not work. Um, and then XMX and XMS, that pretty much, uh, it dictates how much memory is allocated to the Java machine. Um, XMX is, max, is uh, pretty much the maximum amount of memory allocated, and XMS is the starting amount of memory allocated to the Java machine. Um, you want to set this to pretty much half of what your computer has. Uh, if you have 4 gigs of RAM, set it to 2. Thousand. If you have uh, eight gigs of RAM, set to four thousand. I have eight gigs of RAM, and I'm setting to five thousand only because I know what I'm doing, and I'm not running many plugins, and I'm not running many uh, programs in the background. Um, also, this right here is important. I am using Java version seven. If you have Java version six, you're gonna have to change its directory. Uh, you probably only have to change this number to six, but I'm not exactly sure. What you want to do is you want to go into your computer files, your program files, and you want to find your Java, like where it's located, where it's installed, and set this directory to the exe file uh, of Java. Once you have all, all that set up, do file, you want to do save as, make sure it saves as type, it saves as a type as this, sorry, all files, and then you can, you can name it whatever you want, but it needs to have dot .bat at the end of the actual name. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just run the script, and uh, you'll get some errors at the top. That's only because uh, it's generating all your files, so don't worry about those. Um, so once it's done, only took uh, only took seven seconds. Once it's done, I'm going to go ahead and open up this server properties file and show you guys around. Um, MOTD, this is the, the uh, description for your server that shows up in the server list. I'm going to set this to YouTube tutorial. Uh, okay, view distance, that's something that's really important that not a lot of people know about. This is how many chunks in every direction loads for a player in your world. Uh, if, you are, if you're having lag issues, the easiest way to fix those lag issues, apart from using Spigot, uh, is to actually set this to 5, or set this to a lower number than 10. I personally have 5 on my server, um, only because it really, you have no idea how much it helps, it helps a lot, because um, it loads so many less chunks. Um, especially when you have like 60 players online, that's five chunks in every direction that loads less times 60 players, and that makes a huge difference. Um, allow nether, you can disable the nether world. Uh, pretty much all this, if you don't know what any of this does, just go on Google and look it up. 
uh, there'll be you'll find a wiki page that has the uh, description of what uh, all this does. It pre it's pretty much like self-explanatory though, because I mean you know PvP that's pretty much uh, common sense what this does, uh, and everything else also yeah it's common sense whitelist. If you don't want a whitelist, it's just false. Um, your port this is important. Uh, you need to, if you want to have players or people that are not on your internet network to join your server, you will have to open up this port. If you are trying to get your friend at his house to connect to your server that's hosted at your house, they won't be able to do it unless you open up this port. Now, if you want to learn how to open up ports, go on Google and look up how to open up ports for a Minecraft server, and you'll get great tutorials on how to do it. I don't have time this year to do it, but it's rather simple, and it's easy, and it doesn't take long. Um, and if you change this, make sure you change it also on uh, the on your router page when you change when you open up your ports. Um, everything else uh, you don't need, you don't need to worry about pretty much. So I'm going to close out of this. Yes, save. Uh, and I'm going to sub. I'm going. Oh yeah, sorry. Plugins. This is where all your plugin jar files go. Um, I have a bunch of uh, t of plugin tutorials on my channel that if you uh, want to check out, you'll learn a lot about you know just various Minecraft plugins. Um, ops.txt is if you want to define a player as an admin, you just put their name here and it would make them an admin account in Minecraft. However, I would recommend actually using a permission plugin and not using ops because a permission plugin lets you lets you do a lot more. It lets you define ranks and it's just it has a lot more that it offers that ops can't do. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just start this up. And it starts out without any errors, so that's good. It's preparing the spawn region, and we should, all, we should all be good. We should be all good, sorry. Okay, so, multiplayer. There we go, my server shows up. I'm going to log in, alright. My world is generated fine. Everything is beautiful. No Africans in sight. We're all good. Uh, so, there you go. You have your own Minecraft server. Um, and as you can see in the server list... Uh, it says YouTube tutorials, so the MOTD that I, that I changed works. Um, so that's it for this video. However, don't forget to check out my server, mc.goldrealms.com. We have faction PvP, we have kit PvP, we have Sky Wars, we have Sky Block, we have Hunger Games, and we have a prison server all in one. It's a great server, and I would appreciate it if you guys checked it out. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like it, favorite it. Uh, liking this video takes a split second, and it really helps our, uh, our channel grow. Uh, thank you for watching, and have a good day.